Welcome. This video is a lesson from our DIY Pardot implementation course. If you're looking to get a new Pardot org set up and installed correctly, and you're looking for a little bit of extra help, consider taking our course. We'll walk through those steps with you in videos just like this one to make sure everything is installed and set up properly. I hope this video helps. The link is in the description below. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to add the JavaScript tracking code to your website. So the first thing we need to do is generate the code, and then I'll talk about a couple different ways you can get it on your website. If you're not comfortable, you don't have access to your website to add this code, we also have an email template for you. You can just copy and paste the code into that email template and then send it over to your IT team or your website manager, and they should be able to get it added for you. What the JavaScript code does is it allows you to track visitors across your website so you can see when those prospects are clicking on specific pages. You can see how they're navigating and you can give them extra extra points if they go to a pricing page or some other you know, high value indicator like that. The first place we need to start is under domain management again. So go to Pardot settings, click on domain management, and then scroll down and you should have a validated tracking domain at this point. And then what you can do is generate their tracking code at the bottom here. So where it says tracker domain, go ahead and choose whichever one is validated that's available here. So I'm gonna use go.hayestudio.com. This should match your website. So I'm gonna put this on hayestudio.com so that those two match. If I had a different website like rotive.io, I wouldn't wanna put this code on rotive.io because the domains don't match and it would be seen as third party tracking not first party tracking then what you can do is choose an override for the default campaign and i always select that website tracking campaign right there whichever one is is matched up with that domain i select here what's nice though is you can actually generate this code multiple times that references different campaigns so if you have a section of your primary website that is tied to a specific marketing effort like it's a mini site or it's landing pages related to an ad campaign or something, you can still have it related to the tracker domain, yet when somebody lands on that page, that activity would flow to that specific ad campaign, something along those lines. So there's a lot of flexibility here. The default for our use case is fine. For most standard marketing sites, you just wanna use the standard website tracking campaign. But if you have something specific in mind, landing pages tied or web pages tied to a specific marketing effort, you can add that here. And then what that does is it generates this code here. And you can see we've got our PI host name is whatever tracker domain we referenced. And then right here, we've got actually the Pardot campaign ID. That's what gets inserted automatically when you choose a campaign right here. And right above that is the Pardot account ID. So copy that code. Now we need to add it to your website. Now the documentation for Pardot says that this should be added to the footer of your website. And oftentimes that works fine, but I've also found that sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes that code that's added to the bottom or the footer of the page just never loads. It never fires for some reason, and we don't get the tracking. So in those cases, I've also put it in the head of the page. And that way it fires when the top of the page loads. And that tends to be a lot more reliable, but that can also slow down the loading of the page itself. So try it in the footer first. If you don't get any luck with that, then go ahead and try it in the head from there. I've got our WordPress Hey Studio site here. I'm gonna go into the dashboard and show you how I would add it in this particular case. Now this WordPress website is using a page builder called Elementor, which has a special area where I can add custom code. If you're using a website that's built on Squarespace or Webflow or other builders like that, there's probably a special section where you can add custom code that's very similar to this. And you'll see that it probably says something along the lines of add pixels or meta tags or other scripts to your site just like it says right here. So if you're on one of those page builders, look in the settings area, look in the documentation for that specific page builder to find out where you should add custom code and more specifically, where you should add tracking pixels. Cause that's what we're talking about here. This is tracking code. So I'm gonna click add new custom code. I'm just gonna call it Pardot tracking code. And then here I can choose whether I wanna put this in the head or if I wanna put it at the beginning of the body of the page or at the end of the body of the page. And the end of the body of the page is often thought of as the footer. So I'm gonna keep it in the head in this case and paste that in and then I'll hit publish. And here I can choose where I want this code to run. I want it to run on every single page. So I'm leaving include on entire site there. 
and hit save and close. Now these specific screens, they only apply if you're using Elementor with WordPress. But again, it's very similar in terms of interactions if you're on Squarespace or something else along those lines. If you are on a custom built website, you might need to edit the code directly and paste in the JavaScript code into that web page. If that is completely foreign to you, I hope you have a web developer that can help you out with that. And then another option for adding this code to websites is using Google Tag Manager. Let me just open that up here. Google Tag Manager is a free utility that manages all these different tags. So the Pardot code is one type of tag and you might have a dozen others. Maybe you want the Facebook pixel code to run on your website. Maybe you have Google Analytics for tracking as well. And you might have a number of other you know, snippets of code like that too. And Google Tag Manager essentially lets you create all these little containers for the different bits of code. And then you just insert the one tag manager code onto the page and everything else loads within that. So if you have a lot of that already, or you already have Google Tag Manager set up, that's perfectly fine. That works great with the Pardot tracking code as well. And that's it. And then to know that it's actually working, what you're going to want to do is to click around your web page, click through a couple different pages, see if your activity shows up within Salesforce. The other thing I like to do is to view the page source and to see the code here. And then from here, I'll type in a little bit of code that we saw in the tracking code. So let me search here for go.heystudio.com. And there it is. That's the code that I added. And it is in fact showing up on the web page that's been generated online. You can do the same thing to confirm that the code is either in the top of the page or the bottom of the page or wherever you had it placed. One thing to note though, is that we only want this to show up once. I have seen it where this code was added accidentally twice and it didn't work as a result. So make sure it's only there once and then you should be good to go. Another way to confirm that this is working is you can go to the Pardot visitor page and see if you have any traffic showing up there. So under the Pardot app, if you go into prospects, come down to visitors, and here you should start to see traffic and people show up. Now, none are going to show up for me because I'm not actually live on the internet. That page is just a um, local version of a website. But what you should see is new visitor today should say one or page view should say one or two. And then down here, you'll see actually rows of visitors that are on that website. And once that code is running, hopefully you've got lots of visitors that you'll see show up here and start getting tracked. So that'll do it for this video. And I'll see you in the next lesson. That was a lesson from our DIY Pardot implementation course. If you'd like more videos similar to it, consider clicking the link in the description below or going to academy.rotive.io. Thanks for watching.